Hey guys and welcome to the Glue. So I'm going to do a breakdown for this new Battle Royale mode which is in Fallout 76 and I'm very surprised that I kind of enjoy this and it is a fun type of VR but at the same time it's very clunky so we're going to go over the positives first and then we're going to go on to the negatives afterwards especially when I was experiencing it. So first of all one of the best things is that you can just jump right in. It doesn't matter what character you have, character 1, 2, 3, or 4, but you do not have perks enabled initially on your characters. You have to earn them just like everything else. I would assume that you would have picked it up from my last video, but I was wrong. And at the same time, you don't start with any of your weapons, so you start off with anything and you find it just randomly throughout the world. You have wood and marine. I don't know if you have any other ones. You have the enclave armor as well. But you go from that kind of area and then you work your way up. Power armor is one of the higher tier armors in this game mode. I've said this specifically that if you are versus a armor build within certain restraints, you can actually do a lot of damage. Now, with that being said, this is actually optimized for performance. You do not have all of Wild Appalachia. You do not have the whole of Fallout 76. The reason why is because of performance. They chose the smallest and most least densely populated area so that you can have the best quality of performance and the right amount of space of land versus elevation versus cover. So if you're going to be doing long range, you can do long range. If you want to be doing short range, you can do short range. There is three different types of box setups, okay? There is small, medium, large. The large one is what you want to get, especially because that has the highest tier loot. And so on and so forth for medium and small. RNG chances are through the roof, just like every other survival type of BR game in every retrospect whatsoever. Then afterwards, you have the biggest thing when it comes to it. You can fire the nuke and win the game. So if you collect a certain amount of cards and then you collect a briefcase, you can launch a nuke and win the game. Okay, it's a lot of fun when it comes to that. I have personally not gotten a nuke win, but I did get a couple victories on my first kind of settings. And I know that some people in my Discord are having a lot of fun with it too. So again, if you guys like that kind of stuff, that's fine by me. Once you get to level 10, you're able to get into the Overseer's Camp. I'm currently working to get it in right now. And that should be another video as we speak. But because this is such a PR experience, you have to put the time in. So a lot of the people that are not newscasting or anything else like that, they won't have the time to just put in the hours to get to level 10, especially if they're not committed to showing what's in the room for Fallout 76 or just a showcase of it. So the next thing on top of it is that you have access to your special. Now, some may say that this is an advantage and some may say that this is a disadvantage. I say that it is an advantage if you've already had a pre-made character in Fallout 76 and the only way to level up specifically your character is to like actually use that character swap in adventure or survival mode to change the special round. So it still forces you to play like adventure and survival mode so that you can change your special. Personally, I think Again, you should have a completely brand new character. You should not be able to choose a perception character, your strength character, pure builds that I've definitely made videos on. And I'm like, yeah, these are pretty OP, especially even after the post nerf of Assassin, Sentinel, and Cavalier. There is a few power armor builds that are extremely utterly OP. And if those cards are the same ones that are available in this new like fucking BR mode, you're going to be having such a problem against power. As soon as you jump in power armor, it'll be game over. The only thing that you do not have is reactive plates. 
okay? Reactive plates is something where if you take damage, you can actually have better AP regen. And also at the same time, because you do not have vats, you do not have certain luck builds or anything else. Again, when you are having the access to use vats in a BR game, it would seem extremely stupid right. and uh, you will use no skill whatsoever. Not using vats in a BR type like this makes it extremely fun. It relies on skill, communication, and tactics. Something that a lot of people were not ready for. Again, as a positive or a negative, depending on how you've built your character in adventure and survival mode, will dictate what special points you will have available for your character inside the BR mode. So, if you made a character that is specifically meant for a low luck, high perception, or high strength, and low luck, and low charisma, you can actually have those benefits. Now, I have not been able to share specifically if you're able to share cards. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but at the same time, if you have that, that could also be a game changer once the optimization of having all those cards are met. When it comes to building, you can put down fortifications, turrets, and a bunch of other things. But what is king is the sniper rifle. When you are far away from somebody and you do not have that build that you haven't been worrying about in all those ages, and then you jump into BR, distance is always your friend in most BR games. I've already gotten at least three wins already because of having a sniper rifle in power armor camping like near on the side while my other like teammates are running in which reminds me at the same time you need four players to start you need to have that level of compatibility there's no trio there's no duo there's no solo queuing it's literally four people there's nothing else currently right now and personally I mean, it's cool, but at the same time, I wish there was a duo thing where you can work with one other player to try and get the advantage over somebody else, more so than four players. But I digress. That could be looked on as a positive or negative thing. There is also, at the same time, while you're going around and you're making sure for these certain things, a high scarcity. You got to make sure that you know exactly where you're going, where you're dropping, just like any other BR. And concurrently, we do not have the information to what spawns more in different locations. But personally, as soon as at least one or two of your squad mates get power armor, it's pretty much game over for most of it, especially if you have heavy weapons and you have some form of cooperation. So, getting on to the bat. I've had this game crash on me three times when I was doing this new Battle Royale mode on PC. I have a 2950X. It is concurrently, I think it's like $800 now, CPU. I have a 1080 Ti with 32 gigs of RAM. If I'm having problems, I don't even know if other people are having problems of right now. I'm still having frame drops. When you are doing a BR, the render distance is a little weird. So once you are at a certain draw distance, you can't see anybody, but you can see their names, and they are invisible because they're outside your render distance. Even with max quality render distance, whether you're on PC, Xbox, or PS4, you won't be able to see them, or shoot them, or do whatever. Okay, and that is really weird, especially in an environment like this where it's heavily rendered to what you can do for far or short distances, especially if you have a sniper rifle. You can't just jump around and be like an idiot like Assassin's Sentinel or run around like a jumping idiot like Assassin's Cavalier. You have to actually see your team, watch your maneuvers and get everything else done. Now, because it was so eccentric to this ideology on top of everything else, that is something that has been very sought after. Now, I assume that you'll be able to get the presidential gauss and bring it over to your sub-character once you're able to do that because a lot of things that are in this new mode are transferable to adventure and survival modes, which, again, could be a big thing as a disadvantage or a advantage depending on if the legendary mods fit the actual type now again i would assume that there's going to be a lot of cosmetics and it will be right it'll be a lot of cosmetics people will just really have a hard time with it 
and there's not really a lot of draw when it comes to long-term play of this new BR mode inside Fallout 76. Yes, it is nuclear winter, but at the same time, I'm like, what is the incentive after a while? Again, it's fun right now, but playing 100, 150 rounds of this, just like anything else, will get boring, and we gotta figure out what they really want for their game, because personally, we have an adventure mode with some storylines and a bunch of other things. Then we have a PvP mode where there's not that many people in. And the people that voted for it, they all left the game. And now we have a BR mode, which again is a PvP situation. But it's more balanced than what survival mode was. Because instead of bringing your characters over, they they still have the characters over. I've, I've said this in other videos where... They need to make a new character for the event and for the mode. If you do not make it for the mode, then that means it's not good. I know you want to keep everything on a certain character in one way, shape, or form, but it makes a certainty that there will be future imbalances because of certain pure builds. And yes, there will be pure builds, especially if you're able to pick perception cards and perk cards or anything else predetermined before the situation right now there's not that many people that are level 10 level 20 level 30 in the battle royale mode but there will be and there will be people that it will make build videos like myself and how will make sure that i will have the best god tier characters once we know of all the new cards that we have available because there is a lot of new perk cards inside the new battle royale mode again you want to queue up with as many of your friends as possible, use the Discord or talk to people. I've been talking to some people that recognize me on my YouTube videos, and it's just been a blast to just solo queue up and do it inside Fallout 76. Even though I have my hesitations to Fallout 76 BR Nuclear Winter, I see right now that it is a lot of fun, and I can't wait to try out new content. If you guys like this kind of stuff, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, and have a good one, everybody.